Georgia, you won the social media content assignment on making the cut. Uh, are you worried at first that your plans for this assignment were going to be too much for a two day assignment? Uh, how did you manage to you know, manage your time and you know, complete uh, such a complex design? I had a lot to live up to because I had been put in the middle or almost at the bottom uh, on many occasions throughout the episode. So I needed to, you know, push my game. So I was like, okay, I need to, I need to win something. I need to do something, you know, to show that I'm capable of get, getting to the final. Um, so I wanted to, so basically the idea was to create paper sculptures and create a three dimensional showpiece. And then the idea was to translate that into 2D, so creating a hero item, photographing it and creating a print. Um, and I think it took me six episodes to understand the idea of accessibility for Amazon, you know, because before I would create an accessible coat for my high end brand, which was probably not really for Amazon customer base, you know, so I, the idea is to create something that is still not boring but you know in a print that has you know the same you know excitement as the show showpiece so i think i nailed it and it obviously took a long time but you can see me buzzing around like cutting things i have an amazing seamstress with me working sewing really fast yeah it was really fun uh, and had you had uh, much experience a lot of experience with social media and social media marketing before this challenge I mean, not TikTok. Um, that is something new for me. Um, but video, I'm 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 really interested in video and you know capturing a. I did a stop motion because I thought it would be interesting to see the the piece come alive and then because it's it's quite um, skeletal. Uh, it's it's quite dark this design and it looks kind of like inside the body and I wanted like an archaeological stencil or something that I wanted to make it kind of that it was kind of building growing on its own like an alien if you know what I mean kind of extra outer worldly let's say um, and I thought it would translate really well if, uh, uh, in video that it would come alive and then go into the body and then she would be alive and you know I don't know something a bit like HR Geiger from Alien you know the designer um, so yeah um, and, and that stop motion that you did in the video was that uh, your first time trying that or have, have you done that before? A stop motion I've tried before and I've usually always failed. Um, but this time I had a lot going for me. I had to, I, I was like, I'm not going to make it too complicated. Obviously we had help from the production uh, to do TikTok. So I, we, all of us are not TikTok people. Uh, I think Marc Antoine was the only one who really knew what he was doing. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel like it worked really well for this short short uh, video. And uh, turning that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, that sculptural piece into the accessible piece, was it a challenge to get that fabric to so that all of the designs hit exactly where you wanted to hit on on the dress and on the model? So it's funny you say that I actually it's pattern placement so you do you figure that out before you put it on the garment so basically you measure where the neckline is going to be where the waist is going to be where everything hits the body and then you 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 place that on on your program to make sure that you're cutting and placing the pattern on the right spot it's really technical especially when you go into production you've got sleeves and you've got growth in sizing and all of that but this is how you do pattern placement. And uh, for your sculptural work, like what kinds of fabrics do you use to kind of create that effect? The sculptural, I, can't, I feel like this specific one, I went for a non-fraying fabric. So when you cut a raw edge, the fabric doesn't fray. And I, since I was using the raw edge and I wanted to make it light but effective uh, if you had a double layer it would just be too thick so i used uh felt which is a, a felted fabric that doesn't fray and also neoprene which is a non-fraying fabric in itself and then i used a jersey to pull it around because it is quite stiff so the side seams are really stretchy and the back so it could fit really nicely and uh what what uh made you interested in, in this kind of sculptural design uh, in the first place? 
I wanted to be an architect um, or a sculptor. And I thought to myself, okay, I, I want to create something beautiful, but I want to translate that into more commercial. I, I also like the business side of things as well, like creating something commercial. I don't want to, I don't want to be an artist and have to, you know, die before I sell anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? I basically, I want to create something beautiful and then see it directly on a person, you know, and, and, and feel, I once went down Oxford street, for example, I saw someone wearing my dress and that moment I was like, this is a daily person that spent their hard earned money on my piece, not a celebrity that you gifted or whatever, because it's amazing to dress Lady Gaga and all of that, but it's actually easy to dress celebrities, whereas it's harder to sell it to some person walking down the street. You know, that's the beauty of, that's what I love. And, uh, you know, the normal design process, uh, I'm guessing, doesn't involve creating a whole look in one day, two days, seven hours. Right. So, uh, like, how has this experience kind of affected or informed uh, the work that you do in general under normal circumstances? Have you, have you learned a lot about I mean, the process? Time, I mean, yeah, I feel like I learned a lot on, the, on making the cut, but I've also rejuvenated my soul. I've become a bit more creative because I feel like I was getting bogged down with the numbers. Like this is a sellable piece. I'll just go sell, sell, sell. And I'll just go, I'll make something less exciting, not less exciting, but I'm now thinking out the box. I'm thinking I'm going to do this amazing showpiece and then I can translate that into something more wearable rather than just create the wearable pieces. And then that kind of makes me sad. So I feel like I, this process, has helped me become a designer again, you know? And I'm guessing that, you know, even though two days is an incredibly short turnaround, uh, after getting a one day assignment and, and a seven hour assignment, was, was it kind of a relief to get this one that was two days? I feel like they were all were crazy. The two days, but I was doing like, a, like it had like 150 pieces in this two day assignment. And that was just for one piece, you know, like all the ripples, were one, one little pattern piece that I was cutting. So I feel like I, two days seems a lot in this process, but it's not a lot when you're trying your best to achieve something great, you know? I don't do that in my everyday life. <laughs> Um, and, you know, being one of just 10 designers from around the world who were selected for the show, mm. um, like, what was it like to know that, you know, to, to be selected and, you know, from however many people applied from around the world to, to, to compete in the show for this opportunity? I mean, it's incredible. I feel humbled. I'm so lucky to have been chosen to do this. Like, you know, it could have been anyone. I'm the only British designer on this show. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible i feel honored honestly well i want to uh, congratulate you on on your uh, victory in this assignment uh your, your first victory on the show um uh, yeah, i'll first, find I out know. i was waiting for it <laughs> i'll uh, i'll find out uh soon uh whether uh you know how far, much farther it goes but uh regardless uh it's been a pleasure talking with you and and best of luck with all of your future endeavors Thank you. I love your questions. They were really nice. Thank you so much. Lovely thank, to meet you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers.